Hey guys, welcome to the Where Are They Now series, where we interview former Hillcrest students to find out where are they now. Today's guest is a friend of mine, and I believe you're gonna find it really encouraging. So let's listen up to my interview with her now. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Would you be able to please tell us your full name and what year you graduated from Hillcrest? Sure. So my name is Dina Paremi, and I graduated uh, from Hillcrest in 2015. Nice. Um, so, what have you been up to these days? Because that's that's like five years ago. Five years, I know. Don't say it too many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have I been up to? So, I actually finished my university studies last month, which is really exciting. Nice. So it was a, thank you. Um, so, it was a four and a half year course and I'm finally done which is awesome. Um, so at the moment, I'm working part-time at Bank of Melbourne. And so that's been my part-time gig uh, throughout university. Um, but next year, I'll be starting my proper adult job, um, which is going to be really exciting. So I'll be working as a risk consultant at KPMG, which is going to be awesome. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Now, uh, thinking back on some memories at Hillcrest, do you have any sort of funny ones, especially with maybe teachers or staff that are still there? One particular thing that does come to mind is good old Mr. Novak. Um, so I had him for business management, and I remember there would be multiple times where he would give us little mini lectures about how to do beauty treatment. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I remember there was this one time where he taught us um, how to correctly apply under eye cream using your ring finger and not any other finger, um, which was quite amusing. So um, that one definitely does come to mind. So yeah, he's the best. Uh, did you ever get in trouble when you were back at Hillcrest? Or like, what was the <laughs> biggest time you got in trouble? Probably the biggest time I got in trouble was I remember in year 10, um, I was a bit of a chatterbox in year 10. I think I was starting to come out of my shell. And I remember like, it was actually, it got onto my report. <laughs> like I remember the teacher at that time, she was like, Dina is a chatterbox. So some, I'm paraphrasing, but something along those lines. <laughs> um, and I remember my parents reading that and being like, what, like Dina, chatterbox. And they were just so perplexed. Um, and I remember it being brought up in the parent-teacher interviews, which was quite daunting. Um, so not my finest moment, but look, I was a really good student. Like, I don't think I ever got a, got a detention. Like, I was wow. I was quite good. So really no pockets? My... You never had to pick buckets, up? Yes. Buckets, okay, yes. Buckets, okay. yes. <laughs> I, <will, laughs> I will admit to buckets, but not detention. So you mentioned uh, Mr. Novak earlier, which is a great memory. Do you have any other sort of fond memories that you wanted to share? Um, I think one is definitely, so I was on the Senate in um, year 11 and 12, or maybe just year 12, I don't quite remember. But I remember one of the things um, that I organized was a time capsule for the year 12s. Um, and so it's actually still, I hope, still sitting in Mr. Novak's office. I remember one um, Wednesday, like we had like a period five and six. And so all the year 12s, like we wrote letters to each other and um, we put it in these like little manila folders and it's in like an archive box, hopefully still in Mr. Novak's office somewhere. Um, and so we're going to open that um, in the 10 year reunion, which is only five years away, which is wow. crazy. I know. <laughs> But I remember like just being so excited to organize that and like getting all the stuff and yeah, really looking forward to opening it up and um, exploring what we wrote in 2015. It's gonna be good times. What about like when you're back in, when you're in Hillcrest, like five, six years ago or so, how was your relationship with God then? And then how is it kind of now? How's that changed? So when I was in Hillcrest, um, I remember being quite involved um, in the Christian sort of events, so like chapel and um, all that sort of stuff. Um, but definitely, um, I think it was very minimal. Like, I don't think my relationship was as close to, to God as it is now. Um, and I think that's purely just because I've just had a lot more life experience. Um, I'm more independent now, which means that I've had to depend on God. Um, so I think definitely, um, my faith has uh, evolved and is much more stronger now um, and I'm yeah just a lot more I get it as a I'm a more established Christian um, just a lot more firmer in my faith very involved in church 
um, and I love it and it's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, um, some people wouldn't know this, but we go to the same church and we get to we do. think together on the worship team and you serve in the youth yeah. group, so we so appreciate that. Thank you, I love it. I think, I, I think for me, I just have a real passion for empowering people and I think being a youth leader really allows me to do that. So I love it dearly, good. Yeah. That's so good. Well, um, maybe for the last question, did you have sort of any advice or maybe kind of a Bible verse that you might want to encourage the Hillcrest students now? One piece of advice that I would really dish out is really invest time um, into finding your passions. Um, I think when you're in school, especially VCE, you get really drawn into, um, you know, studying and ATARs and courses and it can be very high level stuff. And then you're put in a position where, you know, someone asks you, well, what are you passionate about? Or what do you like to do? And you don't really have an answer. And I know I found myself in that position. Um, but I think it's really important to make sure that you find what your passion is in life um, and really invest time into crafting that. Um, and often it'll be, you know, um, a passion that God has given you or laid on your heart. and it's you're using the abilities that God has given you to fulfill that. Um, so yeah, I would just really encourage the students to put time into finding that passion. I know for me, it's, as I was saying before, like empowering people is something that I really love to do. And I think God has blessed me with, you know, good communication skills, the ability to, you know, socialize well. So all these things, so I hope that I'm fulfilling that purpose and all of that. Um, and I think one Bible verse is definitely um, 2 Timothy 1.7, where it says, you know, um, God didn't give us a spirit of timidity, but one of um, power, love and self-discipline. And I think that's a really good verse because it reminds us that we shouldn't be passive, but we should really, you know, be bold and uh, be courageous and take that step to figure out what we want to do in life. So yeah, that's a little bit for me. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dina. Uh, for encouraging me and for encouraging all of our secondary students today and we wish no you all the worries. best in the future thank you jason really appreciate it